Welcome back to Budget and Bling, the series where we upgrade the pre-con decks for a little and a lot. Today we're taking a look at Morska Undersea Sleuth from the Deep Clue Sea pre-con from Murders at Karlov Manor. I'm going to show you some cards under $10 that I would add, some cards over $10 that I would add, and then at the end I'm going to show you what I would cut from the deck to make room for those cards. Highest level of gratitude to our patrons who power the channel through Patreon. Check out the Patreon link in the description to learn about monthly giveaways, VIP Discord access, and even our official playmat. Thank you to our sponsors that allow us to work on this channel full time. Card Conduit, the best place to sell your cards on the internet. TCG Player, the best place to buy them. Dragon Shield, the best way to protect them. And Moxfield, the best deckless website on the internet. Morska Undersea Sleuth is a green, a white, and a blue for a 2 3 Vidalkin Fish Detective says, you have no maximum hand size. At the beginning of your upkeep, investigate, and whenever you draw your second card each turn, put two plus one plus one counters on Morska Undersea Sleuth. We've got some pretty cool strategies to build around here with Morska. No maximum hand size, we can be drawing a lot of cards, and that's great because we're going to be with our clue tokens. We're going to be drawing on our turn two cards per turn, one at the beginning of our turn and one when we crack a clue. So we're gonna be able to run a lot of cards that have this strategy that the bottom of Morska says, whenever you draw your second card each turn, we're gonna be able to trigger those cards pretty consistently so we can lean into that. Look, we're also gonna be creating a lot of artifacts in this deck, strangely enough. The clue tokens are artifacts, so we can lean into those synergies as well. Let's start the budget section with Prince Imrahil the Fair, a blue, a white for a 2-2 human noble that says whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. That's each turn, so on our turn, like I said, we're going to be able to trigger this pretty consistently, but on our opponent's turns, we may also be able to trigger this. If we are cracking two clues or drawing through some other effect on our opponent's turns, we'll be creating 1-1s one, there. Great to go wide, just easy, repeated value. I also love Rise and Shine in this deck. I told you, those clue tokens are artifacts, and so we can take advantage of that. Rise and Shine is a sorcery for two, a blue, and one other that says, target non-creature artifact you control becomes a zero, zero artifact creature, put four plus one plus one counters on each artifact that became a creature this way. We want to cast this for the overload, though, because we kind of want to use this as a finisher. Get a bunch of clue tokens on the battlefield, cast Rise and Shine for its overload. We're going to change target in the text to each. So it's going to say for six mana, two blue and four, each non-creature artifact you control becomes a zero zero artifact creature put four plus one plus one counters on each artifact that became a creature this way suddenly all of your clues are ready to attack huge swing coming out of your opponents out of nowhere and then suddenly they're all creatures for good this isn't even an end of turn effect so i love running that in here also really like a newer card thousand moon smithy two white and two other for a legendary artifact when thousand moon smithy enters the battlefield you create a white gnome soldier artifact creature token with this creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of artifacts and or creatures you control yeah that creature token is gonna be big in our deck we got a lot of clues we got a lot of creatures at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase you may tap five untapped artifacts and or creatures you control and if you do you transform it so with clues if they're just sitting there we can use them for value here tap five of them that are untapped and we can transform thousand moon smithy into barracks of the thousand it taps to add a white but it says whenever you cast an artifact or creature spell using mana produced by barracks of the thousand create a white gnome soldier artifact creature token with this creature's power toughness reach equal to the number of artifacts and or creatures you control suddenly now when we're casting we're also creating huge token creatures that can be our beat sticks really love thousand moon smithy in this deck also love jahira friend of the forest a green and two for a two three human elf druid it says tokens you control have add one green all of our clue tokens are suddenly Lanoir Elves. That is ridiculous, and so much mana ramp. Jahira definitely belongs in this deck, and really affordable to obtain. This is like a $3 card. Jahira should definitely be in here. Ramp using your tokens. Also really love Min, Wily Illusionist. Only four bucks for a Gnome Wizard here, a blue, blue, and one for one, three. It says whenever you draw your second card each turn, fantastic create a one one blue illusion creature token with this creature gets plus one plus oh for each other illusion you control and whenever an illusion you control dies you can put a permanent card with mana value less than or equal to the creature's power from your hand onto the battlefield this gets out of hand quick just believe me one of our mods on the channel plays this deck as his commander and this card just gets nutty you're drawing your second card each turn which this deck is going to be able to consistently do 
that creates the illusion the illusions grow the illusions and when the illusions are answered finally they are able to bring in permanence immediately right onto the battlefield with mana value less than or equal to love this in this deck really think this is good card advantage and then primal vigor this card is under ten dollars that's crazy to me a green and four for an enchantment that says if one or more tokens would be created twice that many of those tokens are created instead if one or more plus one plus one counters would be put on a creature twice that many plus one plus one counters are put on that creature instead look at our commander our commander creates tokens and gets plus one plus one counters this is a good card Typically, I have five budget upgrades and five bling upgrades, but there's been a lot of reprints in recent years. And so right now I've got six budget upgrades and four bling upgrades. So I guess tell me in the future if any of the budget upgrades have gotten over 10 or any of these four cards have gotten under 10. Urza Lord High Artificer is right on that line. Two blue and two other for a 1-4 human artificer. When it ETBs, you create a 0-0 zero, zero colorless construct artifact creature token. With this creature gets plus one, plus one for each artifact you control. That's very good synergy. Big beat stick that's going to grow with our clues. Tap an untapped artifact you control to add a blue. This is another one, like Jahira. We're turning our clues into mana rocks. That's insane. Out of nowhere, too. And then we can pay five, shuffle our library, exile the top card, and we can play that card without paying its mana cost. This is where Urza goes from really strong to busted, is when we can consistently be tapping our clues to activate Urza's ability to get free things. That's what we want to be doing. I also really like Senator Peacock. This is from the clue set that came out alongside Murders at Karlov Manor. Two blue, three other for a three, four. Artifacts you control are clues in addition to their other types and have pay two, sack it, draw a card. And then whenever you sack a clue, target creature can't be blocked this turn. That's really good for our deck. We're going to have, hopefully, a very giant Morska that is ready to maybe just one-shot somebody with commander damage. We'll sack a clue. Morska can't be blocked. That plan's going to go a little easier now. I like Senator Peacock in this deck a lot. I also like Alquist Proft. Alquist came from Murders at Karloff Manor, the main set. It says a blue, a white, and one for a 3-3 human detective with vigilance. When it ETBs, you investigate. And you can pay two blue, a white, and X, sack a clue, draw X cards, and gain X life. So if we don't need the clues anymore, let's just take one, pump a bunch of mana that we've got left over. We can do this at instant speed, draw a ton of cards, and gain a ton of life. Get back into this game. Alquist Prof is fantastic in this deck. Really love any clue synergy. And Mondrak, look, y'all, two white, two other, four, four. If one or more tokens would be created under your control, that's what we're trying to do here. Twice that many of those tokens are created instead. That's what we need to see here. We can use our clues to make Mondrak indestructible, sure. But all we want to do really is double our tokens. Taking a look at the cuts in this deck, typically I like redundancy on whatever we're trying to do. This is a card draw spell that makes our maximum hand size infinite for the rest of the game. This just seems like unnecessary redundancy to me and an easy cut for something that's more synergistic with our clues. This is another one. It's just a decent draw spell, life gain spell that leaves a flying trampling body behind. Hydroid Crisis seems like a good card to put in this deck, but not necessarily a good synergistic card. And there's a lot of options for counters, tokens, artifacts, clues, a lot of good, strong synergistic pieces that are options for this deck and so cards like hydroid crisis in my opinion just get cut it's a green deck let's not run so many mana rocks i cut talisman of unity from this deck i just always find in a green deck these mana rocks are something that i can cut to make something more synergistic graph mole is not impactful enough on the game three mana for a two four when you sack a clue gain three life that's fine that's eh, not really what we want to be doing though that's not going to win us the game it's just going to put it off sophia dogged detective is a really cool commander but i don't really like it in the 99 of this there's nothing in particular that is like yes clues and itself is not as impactful as we want a four mana spell to be when we're not specifically building around it and so i would just take this out and build this as a commander deck itself instead of putting it in the 99 of this one maybe one that's got more dogs to take advantage of that each dog clause aerial extortionist it's a decent card, but it just doesn't have anything to do with our synergies. ETBs or deals combat damage, we exile something. They can cast it as long as it's exiled. And whenever another player plays a spell from anywhere but their hand, we draw a card. It's decent. I don't like it at five mana, and it doesn't synergize or give us any huge payoffs. Wave Sifter, two mana to create two tokens. 
we're going to be creating so many clue tokens this one just doesn't seem impactful enough either to me i would rather play something much more ongoing impactful with our five mana than something like wave sifter here i also think that hornet queen good creature good card not for this deck i don't know why this is in this deck maybe because it creates creature tokens and so it's a top end you know big seven mana splashy spell that creates tokens and so it's like okay you could put doubling season in here and hornet queen is really good i just in the way that i want to build this and lean into the clue token aspect this isn't where i want to be i want to like cheat this on or something you know put this in the 99 of another deck also coma it's another one it's a really good card we're creating tokens but it's just kind of its own little thing if you just need a really strong seven mana creature sure leave this in but otherwise it just doesn't do anything with clues we're not investigating with coma i don't see an eyeglass i don't see a detective hat on that serpent what i see is a really strong creature that creates a lot of tokens and again i guess that's why it's in here but it's just not for me and then organic extinction it improvises we get it you can help cast this spell by tapping your clues love that we're not running a lot of artifact creatures and our opponents might be so we're going to cast a board wipe that yeah we can cheat the cost of it but we're cheating a cost of 10 so what are we doing and we might leave some of our opponent's creatures behind and as far as our creatures go there's not a lot of them that are going to dodge this organic extinction so unless you build more into an artifact creature theme specifically i don't want to run this in our deck but you know i'm sure that you have a great commander deck that you can take this out and put into because it's a fantastic spell just not what we want to be doing those are my upgrades let me know how i did in the comments down below if you think you got any value from this video hit that subscribe button other than that i'm tapped out catch you in the next one it was coma the cosmos serpent coma punched me for saying that it wasn't good enough for this deck